Hi there, Danish learner. Welcome back to my channel, Danish Matters. I'm Tina Baga, your Danish friend and tutor. Do you know the feeling of not being able to express yourself the way you would like to in Danish? That's what I hear from a lot of my students. They struggle with expressing what they would like to say. They struggle with feeling like themselves, like an adult. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Before we get started, I would like to remind you that if you would like a Danish course with me, then write to tina at danishmatters.dk. I can help you all the way through your Danish learning journey, so to speak. I have taught beginners level and intermediate and advanced and pronunciation a lot. So please write to me in order to find the course that you would like. Also, if there is something specific that you would like to focus on. So let's talk about not being able to express what you would like to say in Danish. I know that a lot of people, they would say that I feel like that all the time. And uh, that is something that I know myself. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story before I get to more of my points. So as some of you might know, I also work at a study abroad program called DIS, where I teach American University students and I teach the course or the class Danish language and culture. And a few years ago, when Corona was harassing all of us and our lives all over the world, we didn't have any students to teach. So what we did was that we were having workshops where we were developing teaching practices together instead. It was very interesting. And uh, the language at that workplace is English. So if you meet someone in the hallway, in the corridors, and you don't know what nationalities they are, you would speak to them in, in English. And all of these workshops were conducted in English. Um, and when I teach at DIS, I teach at a sort of above level and advanced level, sort of it's called intermediate, but it's really intermediate and up. And that means that the people I teach, they already know some Danish. And that means that I try hard not to speak English with them. That is, we do, of course, explain things and we do, of course, refer to the English language and so on. It's not like it's forbidden, but I really try to speak as much Danish as I can with my students so they can develop their language skills, learn more vocab, grammar, etc. in Danish. So consequently, when going through all of those workshops, this meant that as opposed to my colleagues, I was sort of struggling because they speak English every day. That's what they do. That's the only thing they do almost. Whereas I almost only speak Danish. So it was a little hard um, because um, those days I was talking about topics that were maybe new to me. I was talking to a lot of people that I didn't know. Yes, yeah, is a big place. I don't know everybody. Um, and I was also doing all of that in a language that wasn't my own. So that was draining and hard, but it was a great language learning experience because I could see myself as a language learner and I could put myself in your shoes. Of course, I've already done that when I've learned languages myself as a child and as a youngster and as an au pair in Brussels many years ago. But this was just a new opportunity and a new setting, a new environment where I sort of was reminded about, yeah, this is difficult. This is what my students go through when they attend meetings at their workplace or they talk to the teachers of their children's um, school or um, they talk to their in-laws or I mean they're in situations where this is the case for them they're speaking in a language that is not their own that is if they know Danish well enough to even try to conduct a conversation in Danish yeah and um, I believe that we have something all language learner have something that I would call a language mood and that would be translated in Danish into <laughs> that's what I call it 
And just a little like side note here is that humor in Danish is mood. That is, we stress the latter part, that is the last syllable of the word, humor, that is mood, as opposed to huma, which is humor. Huma, stressing the first syllable. Yeah, just a little side note on that. So I talk about here people's mood, people's language mood, people's sprog humor. I believe very much in that, and I think that your sprog humor, your language mood, depends on a lot of different things about you in general, and you in specific situations, and you during your day. What are you feeling? How are you feeling in this type of situations during this particular day? So a little list that will affect, to me at least, that will affect your language mood could be your general well-being in your life as a whole, your overall mood of the day, introversion, extroversion, how well rested you are, I think that's a big one, whether you're hungry or thirsty, whether you're hot or cold, whether you're comfortable with the people that you're talking to, that's also very big and important one, for how long you're talking, both your own contribution to the conversation and the entire length of the, the entire uh, conversation. What you did before the conversation and what you're going to do after the conversation, that will also be affecting you. And probably the list will go on. And some of you might think, but that's all of those things. That's not a problem for me at all. Then you're just not as sensitive as I am and as some other people are. Or you might even be more sensitive and add more things to the list thinking, oh, there's this, there's this, there's this as well. Then you're just maybe more sensitive than I am. So, of course, this is just my examples. Yeah, you might add more, you might not relate at all to the list. So what am I saying here? I'm saying that I know where you're coming from when you're speaking Danish because I know it from myself. Yeah, I know how many things I hold back because my language mood just isn't up for it this particular day or that particular day. I know how I feel when one seemingly critical glance or remark can make me go all quiet and or I just I just don't speak or just speak an absolute minimum um, I know how I have to awkwardly pause in order to search for words I even do this during my videos I know how it is when the words I'd like to use sort of crumble and I have to express myself in a much simpler way than I actually wanted to feeling a little bit like a child yeah do you relate I know how much I push myself to speak anyhow and how drained I get after conversations in another language, yeah? So believe me, I know, I know where you're coming from. So what do you do about all of this? Well, to me, there's only this. Keep on keeping on. To learn more of the language, that's a big one. Keep on going, keep on improving, keep on progressing. And try to learn not to stick, or not to stick, like try to learn how, how to not let things stick with you. Um, if someone has like put out some remarks about your Danish or sort of looked at you a little like, huh? or I mean, things that can affect you because we might be a little bit sensitive when we speak in another language. Yeah, Try not to let that stick with you the rest of the day. Try not to beat yourself up about it. Try to have other things in your life, I really hope you have and I think you have, other things that you engage in, in other things that you like, other things that mean something to you and that you can be happy about and joyful about, yeah, so that you'll forget all of that because it really is sort of minor. Know this, what might have been a total disaster language-wise yesterday or another day in the past or last time you spoke to these people or that you spoke about this topic, 
does not mean that it will be this disastrous again. It's maybe uh, just that one time. Maybe it will be totally different. You don't have to fear it as much as you might think, yeah? Um, so try not to worry too much. And this does not define you, yeah? It's something that you did, something that you said. It's not you as a person, yeah? So go on in there, get back on your horse, try again. And um, you also have a bigger chance of success, whatever that is, um, if you try to get your rest, try to get some exercise. It can just be walks, yeah? I'm not a doctor, I'm definitely not good at yeah, exercising all of that myself, but I know how how good it is and, and how much it really affect, affects the language mood that you have, your general well-being and your day, yeah? Eat healthily, all of that, whatever is needed to better shape you personally so that your language mood can be more in balance, maybe more of the same and not like a roller coaster as much. Yeah, I know it's easier said than done. I'm still struggling it, with it myself, but I'm still trying. Making these videos has actually helped a lot because I'm thinking, okay, I'm just gonna put myself out there. I'm just gonna speak the way I speak. They're not gonna die from me sort of stumbling across some words. I'm not gonna die from it either. So, I just do it. There is no, uh, there's no big fear. There is no disaster about it. It's, it's not that bad. Yeah, just do it anyway. Um, and I'd like to end with three points that are actually important. Praise yourself when you, in your terms, in your perception, have succeeded. Pat yourself on the shoulder. Yeah? Yes! Ha! I did it! Maybe get yourself a little treat. It doesn't have to be sweet. It can be anything. It could also be something that you do. Yeah? Number two, success is sometimes defined in the very act of trying. So sort of isolate what came out of it and the fact that you actually did it. Praise yourself some saying, eh, whatever, but I did it. That's the success. That's the criteria that you need to go for, yeah? And three, if it wasn't all that good, if you didn't succeed all that well with those people, or talking about that topic, people that you talk to or with have probably already forgotten. They have their own lives. Yeah, they don't care. So think about that as well. So how is your language mood? Your Sprohumor, did Sprohumor today? Write it in the comments. Let's have a, a chat about language mood. Really believe that this is a thing, although probably not scientifically proven, but it is a thing in language learning. So, all the rest of luck with your Danish. Remember, if you would like a Danish course with me, write to Tina at danishmatters.dk. And I just got left to say, Happy Danish learning.